Today, you and I are gonna be going out to capture some absolutely epic GoPro footage. I have the GoPro Hero 10 with me, so that's what we're gonna be using. I know I'm using the GoPro Hero 10, but these tips will work with a lot of other GoPros, so keep that in mind. Just gonna throw it in there, very key. Definitely gonna need you. All right, now that we are packed and fully loaded, I'm gonna show you how you can capture cinematic GoPro footage pretty much anywhere. Let's go. All right, we have finally arrived at the first location and I'm here with my friend Jaspree. Hi! And she is going to be our subject for some of these shots because the shots just look a lot more interesting when there's people in it. How do you feel? Great. Yeah, and we're freezing because it's freaking cold out here in sunny San Diego. But anyways, yeah, no sunset, so we're gonna go for the gloomy vibes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pull out the GoPro. Here we are, and what you guys must know is that I use completely manual settings, and that's because I want to get the best image for the editing process. In the GoPro itself, I do have my own profile setup, which I will be sharing with you throughout this video. And back here at the studio, we're going to be talking about the settings that you should be using. The first setting that you want to consider is shooting in 4K or 5K. Either or works, they're both insanely high quality. I'm going to be using the 4K 120 because I want to have the option to slow down my footage in the editing process. As for the lens option that we're going to be using, we're going to be using the wide lens and we want that because we want a large amount to play with in frame, though it does come with a little bit of a fisheye effect. So if we don't want a fisheye effect for whatever shot, we're going to switch over to the linear mode and the linear mode is going to give us that flat camera look, the closest to a normal camera at least. Though make note that it does crop in so if you don't want that crop in factor shoot accordingly when you hold your gopro you want to hold it one of two ways the first one is like this and the second one is like this it's just a flip version and the reason for that is so that you have the most control over your gopro when you're doing these handheld movements it's a small camera right so it's really easy to like shake it unnecessarily also when you hold it like this if you want to tilt it if you want to pan it up and down you have that easy maneuverability. So, pick whatever works for you, bro. You guys can see just breathe over there. So, for this first shot, I'm gonna have her walk around the corner. I think I wanna use looking through the glass to kind of give it a more interesting shot. And we're gonna have her pass through the frame in the GoPro. All right. For this next shot, we're gonna use the railing as a leading line. So that's gonna make the image a lot more interesting and we're gonna add a little bit of a rotate. And the reason we're gonna add this rotate is because it just gives a lot more dynamic to the shot and the shot's gonna feel a lot cooler. For this last shot up here on the balcony, I wanted to do some sort of establishing shot for the environment because we have this epic lookout. So I wanna make sure that you guys are kind of immersed in it. We're gonna have her walk out once again, but we're just gonna capture that end moment where she's looking out epically over the water. So I wanna do a little bit of a pan down and then we'll do a match cut to the beach down there. And now to the beach. Now for the hyper smooth, which is the in-camera stabilization for this GoPro. We want to be using either standard or high. And the reason I say either is because both of those will give you really good stabilization with minimal cropping in on your footage. There is the option of using boost hyper smooth, which is like the maximum amount of stabilization this camera can offer, but it does crop in on your footage. So you want to keep that in mind. And I am particularly using standard because in 4K 120, they don't offer you high. They kind of just skip that. They go no stabilization, standard stabilization, and then boost stabilization. But we don't want that crop in, right? So standard for me, but if you can go high. And speaking of high, that's exactly the setting that we want for the bit rate because the high bit rate is gonna give you the maximum quality image out of the GoPro. I like the beach, but you know, I, I don't like getting sandy. Do you like getting sandy? Not really. Yeah, I don't either. So we're gonna probably head down the beach down that way because we just wanna be away from all these people. 
Oh, by the way, quick tip, if you're ever in San Diego on this beach, Scripps Pier Beach, that uh, this pier over here is actually a really fantastic photo spot, though I recommend coming during like the weekday mornings because that's when it's the less crowded. How does it feel? How does the water feel? I feel like I'm not helping you with videos anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? No! Hold a shit. <laughs> All right, you walk across first. If you freeze oh, yeah. to death, what? We can end the video here. I might have to cut my feet off. <laughs> oh God, you look frozen. I'm not Wait, coming, dude. <laughs> oh God. Oh, dude, this is. Dude, what are you saying? This is horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> you know how we got that super wide shot up on top of the balcony? We're gonna match cut to a beach shot down here. Kind of like this guy right here where he's like looking out into the ocean. We're gonna have just breathe do the same thing. <laughs> and hopefully it works out so that we can move on to the next part of the sequence. For this next shot, I'm really excited because I had this really cool idea. This is why we shoot in 4K 120 slow motion. We're gonna have her walking across the water, but we're gonna have a close up to her feet or somewhere around there so that we can get the water splashing in slow motion. We're also gonna make sure that when we do the shot, we're shooting it low to the ground so we can really get a new angle to add to the sequence. Otherwise, if we kept it at those upper levels, the sequence is gonna get boring. You're gonna have less of a cinematic feeling. Oh, I got too wet <laughs> for that shot. No. No. Oh, I'm going to try to with the <laughs> These next few settings are pretty much every setting you'll see on any other camera, so I'm gonna go through them together. When it comes to shutter speed, you should generally be doubling up relative to your frame rate. So, if you're shooting 24 FPS, then you wanna have a shutter speed of 50 or 48. If you're shooting 60, you want 120. If you want 120, like I'm doing right now, I want a 240 shutter speed. It's generally just a good rule of thumb so that you get a natural amount of motion blur throughout your shots. As we know, I am shooting 4K 120 FPS for this video, so I don't have access to the EV comp setting, but if you're shooting like 4K24, 5K24 or whatever, and you have access to the EV comp, I generally like to keep it at negative 0.5 because I do want to underexpose my footage a little bit. That's just going to give me a little bit more flexibility in the editing process to basically manipulate my footage in the way that I want. I don't want some random overexposure happening when I use this GoPro. For white balance, we definitely do not want that on auto. We don't want it to be jumping between different color temperatures while we're shooting. So. I like to keep that at 5,500 Kelvin. That's just your typical midday color warmth and it works great. You also have some ISO control settings in here as well. So you have an ISO min and you have an ISO max. I keep my ISO min at 100 and I keep my ISO max usually somewhere around 400. And the reason for that is because I wanna keep my ISO as low as possible when it comes to these cameras. These cameras have a super small sensor. So the higher you go in ISO, the more likely they are to add grain to your footage and that's just gonna destroy the image quality. Now we're gonna go into those detail shots and those are close ups in the environment and of course of our subject. So if we see like Jaspreet's face coming in with the epic light, we're gonna try that maybe get some details of the water, things like that basically to help bring in the audience to the sequence. We're also gonna start whipping at the end of our shot so that we can create a whip transition. This is just gonna add a lot more interesting movement to the flow of our sequence versus just hands and slow motions. You get the point. So you guys just saw the first whip and we whipped down, right? Because I wanna whip down into the water where her hand's treading it, right? But it's gonna start at normal speed and then it's gonna slow down. So it's like this really cool like lag effect. These next two settings are primarily for the editing process and when you go in to color your footage. But if you don't plan on doing that, I will recommend which settings you should use so that you can get the best quality footage straight out of your GoPro. For the sharpness, I like to keep the sharpness at low and that's because I'm gonna go into the editing process and I want the ability to be able to adjust my sharpness to my liking. However, if you're not gonna be doing that, then I would recommend that you keep your sharpness at medium. And for the color profile, I will be using the flat profile and that's because, like I said, I'm going into the editing process and that neutral color profile is gonna let me 
have the most flexibility for manipulating the colors. However, if you're not going to be doing that, then I would actually recommend the Vibrant profile setting, not the natural, the Vibrant, because the saturation of colors that comes from Vibrant feels a lot better to my eyes. I could be wrong. You might want to test it out for yourself if you like natural or Vibrant more, but I would recommend Vibrant. We are on the final last two shots of the sequence. Let's go. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And we have this amazing sunset behind us. So we're gonna shoot the final shot first. I don't want to miss the chance with the sunset. We're gonna get a reflection shot. My favorite type of shot, we're gonna use the shoreline to create a reflection with this epic scene. It's just gonna add an extra element that just makes it that much more awesome. For the second to last shot, what I want to do is add the environment a bit more to the sequence. So we're gonna use this rock and I'm gonna weave through it. I'm gonna kind of make sort of like a S sort of move because the idea is you wanna play around with a lot of different camera movements, especially because the GoPro has so much stabilization. You have the opportunity to really get crazy with it and you'll find new ways to add to your sequence. We are finally done with the beach shots. I can finally go home. I am freezing. Are you freezing? I'm freezing and I want some food. Yeah, I'm actually actually pretty hungry. We're getting tacos. I don't know Taco about you. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. And also my pants are wet. See you at home. Editor Anuj here, and a huge part of cinematic video is the color grade itself, especially since we put the GoPro in that flat neutral color profile, which means that we could really go in and dial in the colors to our liking. I wanted to show you guys how I would do that for cinematic video primarily and give you sort of a basis. And from there, you can color grade on your own. So you can see that I've opened up Premiere Pro and I've already loaded my two clips into the timeline. But what you want to make sure, just like these two clips, is that you've chosen the best frames of your sequence. So these two frames, just breathe in the water, epic sunset, and then once again, epic wide view of the ocean, are the best frames in the sequence, or at least I believe them to be. So once I color grade these, these are going to have the color grade that's going to set the tone for the rest of the sequence. And usually it's your best frames that have the best color tones, or you want to have the best color grade anyways, right? So the first thing that we're gonna do is add a new adjustment layer. So you're gonna go down to the bottom left here, click on new item, adjustment layer, okay. Then you're gonna drag it onto your timeline and you wanna shorten it to the length of your color grade. Or sorry, not your color grade, your clip. So Z, cut, drag to the size. Awesome. Now that we've done that, we're gonna go to the top, we're gonna go to the color tab. And this is where we're gonna do all our color editing. Right, so we click an adjustment layer so that we know that the color edits are gonna be attached to that layer itself. And the first thing I like to do, since we shot in a flat neutral color profile, is oversaturate the colors so I know where they're at. So I'm gonna change the saturation to around 150, 170 is a good range in my opinion. And then what you wanna do later on, once you've figured out how you color it and whatnot, you can kinda desaturate and saturate as you'd like, right? So. Now let's move on to curves and curves is where we're going to set like the tones of our image. We want to watch for the highlights, the shadows and all that cool stuff. I want this image to just be brighter all across the board. So I'm going to go ahead into the middle of the curve and raise that up to around here and it's getting a little bit faded. So I'm going to bring back some of the shadows and I'm going to go to the bottom left of this curve and drag it inwards a little bit, but I don't want to make it so black that it kind of just darkens her face and you can't tell who's there, right around here seems perfect. All right, fantastic. Next, we're gonna go down to the hue versus hue. And this is where, in this curve right over here, this is where we get to change the actual colors of a specific color. So for example, I don't want this evening orange to simply be orange. I kinda like to change that up to make it look a little bit more surreal, closer to red and pink. So we're gonna click over here. So it's basically just aiming in the orange sections of the image. And we're gonna drag that up and kind of give like this more pinkish orange. I like that, I like that. And for the blues, cause that's kind of the rest of the graph itself, I'm gonna drag that up to be more of like a teal, but not too teal, like just before it. Yeah, that's starting to look really good. The image is really starting to pop here. I think I wanna go back and add a little bit more contrast to the image. So I'm gonna to go to basic correction, go to contrast, drag that up to around, I don't know, 10. Yeah, 10. Okay, let me just type that in. 10, that seems to do it. And then the shadows lift that up. Nope, just kidding, we're not gonna lift the shadows. And that 
looks fantastic. I would say this is a really good image to start off with. And now what I want to do since I'm set with the colors and how I like that is I'm going to make a copy of this adjustment layer and throw it onto my next clip, right? So I threw it onto my next clip and you can see it's affected that clip pretty well. It is off tone. You can see that it is like a little bit too green, a little bit too blue. And we're going to adjust that right now. But we have the basis and that's what's important. So we know that the shadows of this image are like too green and she herself is a little bit too orange. So what I'm going to do is go back to curves first. We're going to handle the orange. I don't like that much orange. So I'm going to go into the hue versus saturation curve, right? And I'm going to make a dot here and a dot here. So it targets pretty much just the oranges and drag that down just a little bit kind of to make your skin tone a little bit more acceptable to reality. And then we can see this weird green. It's not weird. This is actually the natural color of the ocean kind of shadows. So what we're going to do is go to creative and then we're going to go ahead into the shadow tint and push that towards the blue. This blue and orange split is kind of like my go to, especially because I work with sunsets a lot since I'm in San Diego and you can see that's already doing so much for the image. Oh, that looks gorgeous. This blue setup. However, it's a little bit too blue. So to counteract that for the highlights, I want to tip them towards orange a little bit more while being careful of her skin tone. So maybe like right around here. Oh, that looks fantastic. That looks dreamlike. Oh yes. And then maybe if I play with the temperature up here in basic correction, I can tilt it even a bit more. Oh, that's a bit too orange. You want to be really slight. Sometimes micro adjustments are usually micro adjustments are the way to go. And that to me, looks pretty darn good. That's a great color grade. Ooh, looking good. Let's take down the saturation a little bit so her skin tone comes back a little bit more. Yeah, there we go, something like that. Now, if we go back to the beginning and kind of play these clips in tandem. Yeah, you can see that the color grades match up really nicely. And that is how you do it. Now we've done the colors. So the last thing that we want to do, as mentioned in the settings of the GoPro is adjust the sharpness. That's why we put it on low, right? So go back to adjustment layer. Then we're going to go back to the creative tab and you can see sharpen over here. I'm going to go ahead and put 40 because that's usually a good number for me when it comes to sharpness. You guys can play around with it, but 40 is the number for me. And you can see that made the image a lot more defined. I like it. The water looks really good. Yup, that's what I'm talking about. And I would say like this image is pretty much done. Yeah, and that's how you do it. So go ahead, try like my process out. Hopefully it helps you. And then from there you can kind of build your own. And we are finally back to the studio. Now that you know how to shoot cinematic footage with your GoPro, wouldn't you be interested in how it holds up to a real DSLR, something like the Sony A7S III, a super powerful camera? Well, I made that comparison video for you, so I'm gonna leave that right here. Go ahead and check it out, see if the GoPro can hold up to a DSLR. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe because you know I'd love to have you. And now more than ever, it's time to skyrocket. See you next time.